This time on Video Game Tango, we explore the true meaning of the ZJ and discuss our top Steam Autumn Sale picks. Then after the break, we discuss which video game character is going to present our court case defense in the year 2046, talk some Cowboy Bebop and Arcane, and travel at a grueling pace on the wagon Wheel of Time. My name is Nick with The Record Show. In the virtual criminal justice system, my meme-based defenses are considered especially poggers. These are my shit posts. I'm Josh, and I have neither beginnings nor endings. My name's Russ, and I'm a coin collecting crapper. I'm Andy. Welcome to Video Game Tango. When I hear the term Z job and try to wrap my head around it with my basic human skills, it implies to me a third axis of rotation. You have the X plane, the Y plane, and the Z plane, right? My mind goes straight to Tesseract's fourth dimension and stuff that I can't wrap my Isn't head around. Isn't the third plane time? So it's just no, how it's long it's the you fourth plane. Shut the fuck up. Link Nick's with thinking height with portals. And time. Fourth plane is time. Go to school. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. So a Z job to me implies that you are getting stimulated on an axis that is perpendicular to reality. Thoughts. Dan Aykroyd getting a blowjob from a ghost in Ghostbusters? No, it's it just implies depth. D- depth is length. That's the first dimension. So yeah. It's up, it's down, and it's in, baby. You're thinking very... See, the problem with COVID is everybody stopped going to school. And now they think... I d- I, that's true. When COVID happened, I stopped going to school. Yeah. yeah. I, was like, I haven't no been to school, school since COVID started. Yep. Yeah, same. It's a travesty. Happened. They won't let me. Yeah. I met Travis... Did you My met brother? Travis T? No. Okay. Don't Tra- confuse him with Travis D. He met uh, Travis F. Yes. Travis F. He also did not go to school. A little bit. No Travis's. Dude. Yeah. He works at Costco. He's a, I mean, he's, Costco he's pays doctor. well. He's a dump truck driver. <laughs> 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 drives, drives a garbage truck. Um, I hear Bobby, not Bobby B of fame. Or Bobby um, H of, of lesser. Beautiful butterflies. What? We're the Bobby Kotick. We're talking about real stuff. Uh, yes. Fuck you, Bobby. So it's yeah. time for uh, Kodik, Kotick. I'm going to continue calling him Kotick. Cock-dick. I think it's wrong. It's Cockdick. Mm. So he would like that, so no. Mm. I wrote a thing out because uh, I feel like putting putting Bobby Kotick into one episode, it just doesn't cover everything. Um, so I wanted to highlight a few things that Bobby has done in the, his fairly recent past, um, CEO of Activision Blizzard. Um, that just confirms how much of a scumbag he is. So, Arson. as if we needed more confirmation. I love shitting on the guy. I yeah. want to continue to shit on the guy until well, I mean, it, it just it just keeps happening though. Like he keeps giving you like he keeps giving yeah. reasons to be shit upon. Well, it's um, not even like this stuff isn't even necessarily new. Just more keeps coming to light. It's mm-hmm. awesome. So. In 2006, Bobby Kotick threatened to kill his assistant. He left her a voicemail uh, threatening her life for doing assistant things. (laughs) (laughs) He did my paperwork? It doesn't doesn't say the reason, but, you know, that's always appropriate to do when you're Mm -hmm. the CEO of Activision. Um, No power play there. Of course, Activision had his back stating that his threat was obviously hyperbolic and inappropriate, and he deeply regrets the exaggeration and tone. Regards. Here's a fun one. Many regrets. I just want to point out that if you do nothing and there's no punishment and nothing happened, what the fuck is there for him to regret? Yeah. Okay, moving on. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, in 2009, former Infinity Ward executives Jason West and Vince Zampella <clears throat> negotiated large contracts for themselves and Infinity Ward after years of success from the Call of Duty franchise. Of course, Bobby Kotick included a clause that ownership of the franchise would move to Activision Blizzard if the pair were ever to be fired. Okay. At that very moment, he built a team to help him dig up dirt on West and Zampella, uh, ultimately leading to the acquisition of properties by Activision Blizzard because, you know, business. Mm -hmm. Eventually, everything was settled out of court and large portions of the Infinity Ward team moved to create Respawn. So do do you know what the dirt he managed to... Find was that was not publicized loan. as as part of the okay sure so silty it, loan honestly could have been some real shit could have been but that's not the motivation the motivation was to take majority control of uh, yeah. Infinity Ward I, I shady yeah absolutely okay um because business 
2013, Bobby Kotick and Brian Kelly teamed up during the Vivendi acquisition. Brian Kelly being the old CEO of Vivendi. Um, they took control of it by, uh, by creating an offshore shell company to receive Vivendi's shares during the acquisition rather than Activision. Uh, it made Kotick and Kelly the two largest shareholders of Activision Blizzard. Of course. They successfully were sued by a group of shareholders for $275 million. Ooh. But uh, that still allowed them to maintain control of Activision Blizzard. Of course. Yeah. Now, of course, with this money accrued over time and continuing to accrue um, with the properties that they acquired... Um, Bobby, being um, the massive libertarian he is self-described to be, uh, donated shitloads, an undisclosed amount, uh, to the likes of Mitch McConnell and Paul Ryan. I like both of those. No, I don't. Right? You know, because business. A business turtle, man. Turtle man. So I just thought that was fun, <clears throat> and uh, I just want to continue shitting on Bobby Kotick. Uh, fuck you, Bobby. Exactly. Fuck you. I mean, Bobby. Any of that reminds me of Mitch McConnell. I, I Dude, you didn't even you didn't even touch that. on like the fucking late night uh, quality control group that they announced uh, as again with the I can't remember the 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 Asian lady's name, uh, the girl that just re resigned. Uh, like they're putting in like some sort of quality control team that he's the head of yeah, to investigate <clears throat> past things, but not his past things. Well, it's not, it's not and, just to investigate past and, transgressions. And, to go and but yeah, like to investigate past transgressions and how to move forward and all that stuff. But he gets, he gets to be the head of that. Right. And like to, what's to, the point of it and to handle complaints and that kind of thing. But yes, you're right. He is the head of the committee. Um, he's chair on the committee. Um, and as such, ourselves as and such, he's no immune to investigation. He, yeah. he is, he's off the books as far as their internal investigations go. They used to have this thing called tarn feathering. Yeah. And we need to bring it back. I want, we can't just kill these people cause that's a slippery slope. I, but if you publicly shame them with tar and feathers, I enough like the, times, um, put them in the stocks and let us all throw rotten I, vegetables. Yeah. yeah. We've invented Does so many new vegetables like <laughs> since then. Is everyone's like half brained or something? How is saying, hey, the problem, I know I get it. It's mostly like me and how I've been acting and all the shady shit I've been doing. So we're going to fucking make a team that's going to fucking stop that. Except that I'm the head of that team. And yeah. we won't be looking at me. It means nothing. He said nothing. He's done nothing. Does it like, I don't understand. Why waste the effort? Does, you, you take does a page buy that? out of the Catholic Church's handbook. Like, I mean, who's and you make sure that you lead the witch hunts mm -hmm. so that you aren't found out to be a witch. Yeah. <laughs> we need to yes, accuse, I don't, accuse him of being a witch. Do, I think this is a thing, I, right? We we'll get the evangelical right after him. I don't know about that. I think you have to accuse him of being brown. It's twenty twenty one. Yeah, I just well, assume whoever like whoever hears that is going to be like. Okay, thanks. That means nothing. Like, who is who's hearing that and going? Okay, I'm ready no, to give them a second. Man, shot. it's virtue. You, it's virtue signaling for the shareholders. That's all it's doing. It's it's so they can create headlines and control a narrative. That's all they're doing. At the end, like at the, the end of the, the day, the money's hold, still falling. The, so I, the people that can hold him responsible are the people that also have stake in that game company, money. and clearly they think that they can ride this out by not punishing him and it will be more profitable than if they punished him. Oh, what well, is about the money? He's also majority shareholder of Activision Blizzard himself. Um and he also controls more like half the seats of the board, so I but I feel like what I read into it's like it's the the board could do something about it. They could. But it would just cost them a lot. It would of cost money. them a lot of money. Yeah, oh yeah, I mean, I mean he has a con he has a clause in his contract for 300 million dollars on his exit. So season passes must be routinely refreshed with the blood of tyrants. If only, oh God, if I could pay with the blood of tyrants, I would. I mean, eventually you'll hope that people will stop supporting the Blizzard games. You hope so. Uh, and the company will die. Eventually they will. Once well, all I mean, the well, 
casual Didn't gamers. Roblox just become the most profitable gaming company this week? They did. Yeah. Well, it was last but week. Last yeah, week. they are now above Activision Blizzard. <laughs> so they're on the way down, but it's a long yeah. way to go before you've killed the player base behind Hearthstone. Yeah, Heroes of the Storm. Now, yeah, War- I mean, World of Warcraft. Warcraft has less than two million concurrent views or users now, so wow. it, it continues That's to decline. Low. Yeah, it eight million was low. low. I remember when. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. So, you know, they're, they are a shadow of their former selves. They've just banked so much of that Warcraft money. Yeah. Winter's over, guys. It came. It went. You fucked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a couple things happened this week. And by a couple, I mean uh, the, the big thing being the uh, Steam Autumn Sale. Oh, yes, sir. Started mm-hmm. today as of recording, uh, Thursday the 24th of November. Goes to the 1st of December. Till the 1st of December. So we have a week. You have a week, guys. We have a week. Um, I asked you guys before we started to mm-hmm. come up with a list of your recommendations. They're uh, all Hatful Boyfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> uh, Josh, are you familiar with Hatful Boyfriend? No. I am not. I it's, a, it's a dating scene. Mine were all goose games. So. Where your pigeons... <laughs> You date pigeons in yeah. a dating sim game. So I'm Tesla? Wait, what? We talked about this last oh, week. Tesla well, loves Tesla the, loves with the, the pigeons. pigeons. Oh, I yeah. Forget. What a connection. Wow. Fucking synapse that knuckle. There you <laughs> go. That was good. Watch last week's episode to get that joke, guys. My I didn't even get it. I was there. Yeah. I'm, I mean, s- I'm still upset deep that cuts. you tainted my, my Tesla pedestal with pigeon love. <laughs> Here's the thing. We know Tesla was neurodivergent to put it mildly he could have gone with some dark delights and falling in love with a pigeon is way at the top of the iceberg that's true right? you can't like, fuck a pigeon so like he definitely this, didn't cross yeah. the line uh, i'm okay with it like Pretty sure you can't fuck a pigeon you can't fuck a pigeon josh pigeon cockerel uh cassowary like it gets happens, darker you know what happens when you try to fuck a pigeon Pops it becomes a duck. It fucking pops, bro. It just is that what popcorn chicken is? Yes, sir. <laughs> oh no! What has KFC done? Nothing good. Oh, my famous bowl's finger licking <laughs> good. Um, I do have my list from the autumn summer sale. I have a, a list as well. Which, by the way, fall is a better mm. word, but I'll get into that later. Um, my list is a little weird. I don't feel like I should go first because it's going to be a weird I'll go first. Precedent. My list is the best list. Okay. Go with the best list. It's the mediumist list. No, this. it's the best list. It's the best medium list. <clears throat> yes. <clears throat> um, I think the number one thing on my list of the games I think that people might not have played and absolutely must play at some point okay. uh, is uh, the Ori yes. duology. Yeah. So you have uh, Ori... Um, the Blind Forest and Ori Will of the Wisps, which you can get both of those games for thirteen thirty nine. A steal. Yes. If you have already played the first one or you don't want to play the first one, I didn't actually play the first one because I didn't to. have a PC at the time um, and thoroughly enjoyed Will of the Wisps. It was a delight from start to finish. You can pick that one up for just nine eighty nine, so less than ten bucks. Mm. You're gonna get probably a solid fifteen to twenty hours of fantastic, beautifully. I mean, honestly, the game's just gorgeous. It's just a delight to play. It is a poetry in motion. That <clears throat> it, game it is, is so gorgeous. If you have any artistic inclination and like inspiration, you need to look into Ori. Yeah. Plus the platform, the game is so tight. It is amazing. It's the tightest of tights. Yes. It is the stamina training unit of fleshlights. It's triple odd <laughs> buckshot. It's full of tiny nubs. You will not last longer than 30 It will seconds. destroy a pigeon. Yeah. It doesn't pop pigeons. It fucking blows them up. Oh. Okay. Um, anyways, and I, I'm speaking almost just specifically to Josh. He has not played probably any of the Ori's because he's recent to the PC Master Race. Mm-hmm. Um, it was also on the Xbox, which is it's a platformer, so you want to use a controller. Um, fantastic game. Uh, for me, the personal The Witcher is on sale. If you haven't played The Witcher three, it's on sale right now. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's ten bucks. It's nine ninety nine to play a, Witcher three. That's a steal. Um, do yourself a favor. The Toss new a coin to your Witcher. Season two of The Witcher is coming out this uh, in December, so now you yeah. have an opportunity to jump in. No excuses. Um, Red Dead two, which is a Rockstar game, which 
it's really hard to ever find a Rockstar game on sale. They're doing it yeah. for most of their games right now, which is fucking bananas. I remember three, like three years after GTA Five came out, you still had to buy that game at like full price. Yep. You go to fucking GameStop yep. and shit, and you might get like a two dollar discount. We got really it. lucky that they released the remaster. Now they have to put all their games on sale. Yeah, like yeah, that's pretty much how it works. But twenty nine ninety nine, it's just like. 20 bucks off of its current price, its normal price. If you've ever heard the word cowboy and felt a tingle anywhere in your extremities, play Red Dead. I'm, yeah. I'm upset at Rockstar, and I that's a good That's, that's good. It's on my good list. Deal. Um, you can pick up the entire Arkham Knight collection, Ooh. all the Batman games, for fucking 12 bucks. That's also, that also made my list. You don't even need to play all of the Arkham games to enjoy the Arkham games, mm-hmm. and $12 would still be a fucking great deal for playing one of them. I think as far as, like, uh, the, hands down the best Batman games ever made. Absolutely. Like, it's, there's no Absolutely. doubt about it. Um, the combat system they have, which is kind of, I'd say, a so. derivative of, like, the Assassin's Creed parry combat system, but taken to, like, the next level, mm-hmm. um, is delightful to it's play. Fun. You you will never f- play a fucking superhero game that you do not feel more badass than you do when you're playing an Arkham Knight game. Highly recommend. I would say play uh, Asylum and then, like, I think the next two and you don't necessarily need to play the last one. Uh, it was probably the worst of the ones that I played. Um, it gets really, really repetitive. Um, next up on my list is going to be Fallout New Vegas. Mm. Fallout New Vegas for 10 bucks, and you get all the DLC for. Ooh. Um, I don't even know what they was going for before this. I didn't actually like check, nor did I necessarily believe that Steam was going to have an accurate representation of that. Um but three of the biggest and best DLCs to ever be released for a game come in that package. Uh, and I, I think hands down New Vegas is is the best Fallout. My fa- that favorite Fallout made. game. Um, doing the, what is it, the Lonesome Road DLC from Fallout New Vegas. Um, it was almost like playing in another, an entirely another Fallout game. Was that with the like natives in the canyon? <clears throat> or was that base New Vegas? I don't know. It's been I, so long. It's, it's been a long time. The Lonesome Road stuff follows your role. Like, you, you're following another uh, delivery career, I don't think I played any of the DLCs. The base game was oh, amazing. Yeah. I, yeah. There's three specific DLCs. I think they made, like, essentially five DLCs for New Vegas, but three yeah. of them are, like, it's like playing a brand new campaign. In the uh, game dude, I'm so amazing. Man, that's, that's good. I'm thinking about picking <clears throat> that up myself. Uh, highly recommend um, th- this one is going to be a little uh, niche, um, and it's actually an, an extra addition to the five that I've already named, and that's going to be the Infinity Collection. You can play <clears throat> for twenty three bucks the games that they made in the Infinity Engine, which is going to be Baldur's Gate, Ooh. Baldur's Gate Two, uh, Icewind Dale, all three of which are the enhanced edition. They have Planescape Torment in there, and Planescape Torment oh, yeah. Enhanced Edition is oh. in there as well. Um, they also threw in another one, which is the Siege on Dragon Spear, which is takes place between Baldur's Gate one and two, which I haven't actually played. Uh, but I've done Icewind Dale, I've done BG two, um, I've played Planescape. Um, the enhanced editions, I think I checked them out initially because it was a pretty big deal that they're coming to like tablets, mm-hmm. and it's a uh, what is it top down isometric? Yeah, is what it's referred to typically. Mm-hmm. You will never have a I think up until maybe Baldur's Gate three coming out a more visceral accurate rpg that feels like D. like you're everything you're doing is D to a fucking t and <clears throat> don't get us wrong they have tried wizards yep. has tried so much to make a decent D game since the infinity engine games and they have shit the bed at every initiative role every time every time including one that came out yeah. this year which was also garbage yeah if you can get past the archaic UI and UX and issues over Baldur's Gate, it it is so worth your time. The nice same thing with Planescape Torment. All all of your backgrounds and stuff in that game are like hand drawn backgrounds yeah. and stuff. So your environments that you're playing in always look fantastic. Yeah, it just pretty much comes down to like your actual little characters. I mostly meant like the effects. controls and the fact that you're playing second edition D and D. Oh, the well, game that's doesn't already like, like you you, you kind of have to. 
take the time because back in those days when we were young the games came with manuals and you would read them to know how to play the game because the game did not teach you Baldur's gate 2 came with a spiral notebook yeah it was like five by four inches long and it was an inch and a half thick oh yeah that was the manual yep. that came with Baldur's gate 2 mech warrior 2 came oh with God. two manuals each of them over a hundred pages one was just <laughs> lore yeah and they were 10 inches wide and about five inches tall and the other one was just every fact about the mechs and their specifications next to none of it was like game pay it's like do you need to know the exact tonnage of the left leg of this particular battle mech well, we got a whole page on it i so. i love big box i i've kind of wanted to collect old big box oh, titles man if, if i had money oh yeah dude yeah. Oh. on that same note i think it's this, a good list russ the, the last game manual that was even noteworthy at all was probably halo combat evolved yeah, they had the guns and the different... Uh, had a little bit of lore. It came yeah. with the manual. Mm-hmm. It wasn't just like two pages. It was like eight. Yeah. <laughs> Chat brings up Lord of the Fallen. Was that the slow, chunky Dark Souls? You remember that? I don't know of the game, no. I'll have to look into that. But yeah, I think I think that's what Chat's talking about. That was really good. Yeah, it is. Um, I think Russ and I, we both tried it. It was I think it was free to play for a little while. But it was a really slow, chunky, deliberate, like kind of clone of dark souls where you played oh lords of the fallen yeah yeah yeah. that was a it was another i think launch title for the xbox series x that was a game series x the one x one x it got its lures hook into me but it didn't get its gameplay hooks into me i think it got about three hours into it and it petered out the the combat to me didn't feel as fleshed out it was pensive it was yeah yeah, it was had that weird uh defensive fallen some dope sounding name. No, like the title's fantastic. The game was giving off fucking uh, Dark Souls vibes. It was like um, Dark Souls and Warhammer had a jackbooted baby. Yeah, it was it was neat. Um, Josh, you got a list? I uh, I do I do. Um, being uh, the Star Wars fan that I am, uh, Jedi Fallen Order made the list um, at fifteen bucks. It's a fun game to play. For fifteen dollars, uh, you can't go wrong with that. No, yeah. no, dude, not at all. I mean, uh, good combat, good lightsaber combat, uh, pretty decent characters, and they're making a second one. Um, and it's using uh, the description for that game is one of the most uh, overly used descriptions of any game that we see nowadays, and it's a Dark Souls light. Yeah, light. A L-I-D-E. Souls light. It's a Souls light. Mm-hmm. It yeah. is Souls not. Light. It, the the only the only comparison you make to souls is that like if you die in like the middle of your transition from one checkpoint to the other the enemies respawn and you have to work your way back through it that's it that's yeah. the only fucking comparison you should make to dark souls so like every but, checkpoint uh, from video games ever yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> literally fun fun use of the basic force powers uh good lightsaber and combat and the advanced ones um, i hear you hug a star destroyer to death no yeah no which is the one where the star destroyed? Ten? Force unleashed. Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. Unfurled, unleashed, fallen order, fallen star destroyer. Now, admittedly, those. I mean, those are <laughs> those are fun probably games. well a decade yeah. over, but they were fun. It was yeah. neat just going super saiyan ham with your force powers. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and then uh, I actually have the Batman bundle on my list as well. I've played uh, all the Batman games. They are a Fun play, and again, a new one is coming out. I believe in 2022, uh, where you get to play as Bat family members. So, still not sure how I feel about that. I, I'm a maybe. Uh, what does Bat Uncle look like? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Bat the Bat family is uh, like uh, Red it's Robin, Red and Hood. Yeah, I know, but I just I spooled up a sitcom mm-hmm. of the Bat family in my head. Well, I mean, there's a couple of. Cool iterations of Robin, and then there's Red a Hood. lot of cool iterations. And mm-hmm. Red Hood's cool. Red Hood is a Robin. It's got to be the most Former brooding Robin. family of all time. It is. There's no Bat Moms though. Uh, no. It's no really Bat unfortunate. Moms. Well, they're orphans, so. And then, uh, I mean, like you said, picking it up at twelve bucks, even one of those games at twelve bucks is worth that price, and you're getting four. It's eighty percent off. That's a hell of a deal. That's quick uh, mass. The next game i have on my list is darkest dungeon um a oh, fuck. i almost put that a on. lot of the fun. second one's out the yeah. second i was gonna say again another even game. darker even darker <laughs> uh more of that same good dark dungeon that shadow of a dungeon. yeah <laughs> dark, scary dark. town under dark double dark the list but i mean uh <laughs> darkest dungeon was sitting at 24.99 before today 
right now. You totally worth Darkest it, Dungeon? Yes. So on Xbox, but yes. Okay. Um, yeah. That game's fucking hard. Yeah, it's it really fucking hard. And I think Sabo and I were actually talking you about can it get just it this for week. Three seventy five. Which yeah, oh, three, Jesus. Three seventy five. Yeah, under four it's bucks, guys. Too. I mean, that's that's a steal price, any price way you look at price it. Price of a, a cheap coffee. I told you there's an entire five e. Uh, homebrew setting for darkest dungeon right does not no. surprise me i would play the shit out of i have that the whole though. rules oh it's it's amazing play the shit out of yeah that. i've got anything now, you want i went back on my back and forth on this second and first choice i'm just going to give them how I, I wrote it down i went with uh horizon zero dawn uh which is a game i actually just bought last night at midnight when it went on sale um I picked it up for twenty four ninety nine, fifty percent off its price. Um, I am two and a half hours into it. I am loving it, and again, it has a sequel out, um, so you have more content to look forward. And it had to a really once. good DLC too. Uh, yeah, and uh, this is the game of the year edition, or the complete edition, or whatever the the you know. It's the most edition. It's the most edition. Comes with uh, all the shit that you would expect it to have come with when it launched, but yes, it wasn't all there. the bells and whistles. Uh, it looks like a lot of fun. I'm enjoying it so far. I've uh, we've talked about the game a couple of times uh, already on the pod here, so I'm gonna I'm looking forward to really diving into it instead of just watching some videos on it. Does it come with the premium Raptor armor? I, I God, I hope so. I hope I hope I just Laser haven't found Raptor that yet. Yeah. Um, and then finally, uh, I got Borderlands. Borderlands three on there. Um, all iterations of it are on sale, including its make a fuck you package, uh, which is like one hundred and twenty bucks. They have that shit on sale for sixty five uh, percent off, so you're gonna pick it up for in the mid thirties. Uh, Borderlands three is one of the games that I've just had the most fun playing. Um, Borderlands three is fantastic. I would say that. Always skip the first Borderlands. It's just empty mm-hmm. in comparison. Mm-hmm. Borderlands two and three with their ex- and then their DLC content is but, uh, absolutely uh, delightful. If you got a few other buddies who got the game, I mean, it's always fun to play for a few hours. I mean, throw it's in your one of those games that if I was yeah. teaching a class about video games to kids in fifty years, I'd be like, "This is one of those games that was an institution of its time. Like, you you need to play it just to experience what it was like." Then this idea of practically infinite guns, mm. and it uh, literally has infinite guns, right? Yeah, and I mean, for all intents and purposes, yeah. And all iterations of it are on sale, yeah. uh, ranging from the low sixty percent or from sixty percent to the, the mid DLCs 60%s. for those games. The whole fucking Tiny Tina shit. It's Tiny Tina's is yeah. like top of the list for the DLC. Yeah. So or good. The Mister Torg stuff is probably a very close second. And again, yeah. Tiny Tina's Wonderland is coming out uh, this upcoming year. So yeah. more content. So that's kind of what uh, I base my list on there. Um, I even uh, saw online articles that were actually talking about suggesting people go play the Tiny Tina's DLC to prepare you if you've never played for the next one. So you get a kind of mm. idea of like what's yeah. going on. And then, uh, of course... Uh, Red Dead, uh, as an honorable mention, made my list because, like Russ said, it's hard to find a fault in that game. I mean, mm-hmm. you can just ride around in cinematic mode, and it's, I mean, it's fucking beautiful. The biggest um, thing, I think, if I had to come up with one downside to, to Red Dead, I would say that, like, if you're a female, you probably won't connect to that game as much as you normally would, right? That's it's a lot of hard bitten flea mongers it's it's yeah. very male oriented and it's not yeah. even sexual nature which i it's think is why i can I cowboy see, I see machismo that. john wayne-esque yeah stuff going and on. i can be super sexist by saying this but i would imagine there's not a women that like have fantasized about themselves being like a gunslinging cowboy it depends on the woman but you know like the game is probably not, rare right like it is rare yeah I, i'd give you that if you're gonna pull a stereotype out especially in that well, I mean, especially in that time, in that time frame, I feel like, yeah, like, I mean, you can, you can think of, Calamity of Jane, no, be. no fucking woman wants to be Calamity Jane. No, but she <laughs> might not want to be fucking had, Deadwood, yeah, not after Deadwood. <laughs> but she might want to be Annie Oakley. Yeah. I, I, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's like I said, I'm sure it exists. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that like it, it to me, it does feel very it's, male centric. It's just yeah. probably lower on the list for most women than it is for boys. Yeah. You know, and it's, I feel like it's different because I'm not implying that like any sort of male yeah. protagonist game can't connect with women. It's just yeah. the themes there are all very 
masculine fantasy stuff. We're still slowly grinding away at that male-centered gaming narrative. Yeah. And mm-hmm. eventually... It's fine to make games for boys. It's fine to make yeah. games yeah. for girls. And, or or yeah. for... I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're still for everybody. Yeah, just yeah, at the exactly. end of the day, make a good game. It's a game. choice that you make. It's, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. But no, I, I mean, I see what you mean. Probably not a... I mean, it's a cool game. But, just uh, a reminder, Doom doesn't care what's between your legs. As he long does as not. you're willing to kill demons. Yep. I feel like every gender, uh, however you identify, uh, you can kill fucking demons with grotesque pleasure. Mm-hmm. And Plus, you can tell your Catholic grandma that this is guns. the most Catholic game in existence. Um, that was a good list. And thank you. I'm glad I had a lot of overlap with you guys before I realized I'm going to have a lot of overlap with these guys. <laughs> so I decided to go a little deep. Um, first up on my list is Ultra Kill. Um, I watched Adam play a good chunk of this game. And Ultra Kill is if someone made Doom. Yeah. For like the PS1, cranked up the entire speed of the game by 400%. And replaced everything with robots um a couple of things you can do in the game uh you can move so fast that you can parry your own shotgun bullets uh you can throw coins into the air and reflect your bullets off them uh you can do some amazing things it looks like garbage is a way to put it in the same way that valheim looks like garbage uh but if you like doom if you like quake if you like any kind of fast extremely ultra violent uh, shooters that make you feel like a, a bastion of violence. Give Ultra Kill a try. I feel like it's a description of tribes. Like that's what came to my mind immediately. It, it like it's tribes. tribes. I think the lore of Ultra Kill is like all humans have died off, and the remaining robots live off the blood of the humans, but they're running out. So now they're fighting each other to get to hell first to find the rest of the blood. It's Josh. You'd like that. You love stealing my blood. Yeah, yeah, that's true. You love blood. If you are a blood thief. I mean, if I can't accidentally shoot Andy in the game, I'm not interested in playing it. <laughs> yeah. I'm just I'm just going to put it out there. You dirty sanguine oh, yeah. snatcher. My brother, mankind is dead, blood is fuel, hell is full. That's the tagline of the game. It's fantastic. That's, I mean, it's a good fucking tagline. That's 15.99. Yeah. It's pretty uh, dope. Almost as totally good as these it. crabs can really wail. Yeah. <laughs> Jazz Church. crabs. I'm so excited. Um, next up on the list, Noita. Noita means witch in some weird Scandinavian language. And it is a bizarre game. Uh, you play a magic man, and you have to explore this world. And it's this voxel pixel based game where you can craft your own wands from scratch. Um, mm. Kind of like putting a building block together of I want to trigger to send off this spell that repeats at this time. Uh, and it seems really simple, and you will eventually build a wand that makes you feel like God, and then you will die because you ate too many hallucinogenic mushrooms and water mixed with alchemical juice and turned into pure chaos. And it is a very bizarre game, and That's how I it go. is a Dark Souls light because you are going to die. I think I died over 200 times in that game, and I have not beat it. Um, Every once in a while, I go back and play it, and the whole time I play it, I'm like, why am I playing this? It's because it's fucking fun. But I, every time I see somebody win online, I, they're cheating. I, I don't know how else to describe it. Um, I, I do want to inject here because you talk about dying a lot and stuff. It's something I'm very good at in most of my games. Mm. And I just want to point out, side note, uh, you guys are familiar enough with what Path of Exile is. Mm-hmm. I just want to point out that there's a, there's a mode you can choose to play called Hardcore. Oh, yeah. yeah. That Iron doesn't Man, sound hardcore. like a fun mode to play. When in. you die, nope. You start over. No nope. character gets deleted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that. Well, it doesn't get deleted. It gets pushed to standard, which is uh, not even the current league. And stuff I think like in that, Diablo 2, Iron Man mode, hardcore, if you died, it just deleted your character. File. I feel like only the sickest of people in society play yeah, fucking I don't that know mode. Why. I don't understand. I, I, I can sympathize from a football field away the idea of like, this is very important. You're like, on a teetering edge and that adrenaline must be crazy but i have things to do well there's also like you're playing and it's inside of a system to where you never know it doesn't tell you what killed you yeah just and the one shot mechanics are rampant it's mm-hmm. so like like it could literally just be like okay I've, I've started a new character and stuff i'm fucking 30 hours in i'm i'm grinding my gear and stuff and then like i loaded this map and i died yep random critical like what the fuck is that 
Like, yep. ugh. Sorry. I just... No, I get you. Baffles me that that exists and people play it on the regular. Um, in my effort to go extremely wide with my list, up next is Hard Space Shipbreaker. Oh, yeah. Um, is that the dismantling ships it, game? It mm-hmm. is. Yeah. So I didn't even know that was out. I bought it the moment it came out, and it was extremely buggy, and I've not touched it since. I was waiting for a big update. They've had a couple. So you are a blue-collar worker on a space station, and your job is to dismantle ships that have been decommissioned um it's cowboy bebop in space except you are 16 tons minor man right and you have to float around with like your wait, wait, welder wait, hold on cowboy bebop you're a goddamn bounty hunter yeah. yeah that's why i said it's cowboy bebop but you're 16 tons minor dude what's the tennessee ernie ford in the song. What? <laughs> <laughs> I, hey, Google 16 tons. Uh, oh, oh, my soul to the company yeah. store, right? 16 yeah, tons ha- song is, yeah. Yeah, okay. by Ernie, Tennessee Ernie Ford. Yeah, yeah. I'm 16 um, tons. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, uh, Nick's old and, man brain connected. Yeah. Mm-hmm. To Andrew does that things. song in karaoke every time we fucking go out. So, yeah. what? I've know never heard him sing. Because I started doing it. Because it's a fucking great song in karaoke. So, yeah, you have to cut out ships and, like, slowly bring them apart and try not to hit the engine or the reactor core and things go wrong. You have to tether things together so they don't fall apart. It's like playing reverse Legos, but with radiation and violence. It's like if salvaging metal was an opera. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. (laughs) I was thinking it sounded like Operation in Space. It is exactly bit, that. Yeah. And I should show you the trailer. I have the game. and get you to play it. Steam Friends account. Remember when we tried to play... uh... Oh, Space Engineers? Space engineers. Yeah, we were that not 45 smart minutes. enough for no, that game. No, we nope. were not. No, we were not. <laughs> we were not. I made a plus sign with engines. Yeah. <laughs> I made the hypercube. <laughs> <It was Yeah>. all... <laughs> but Hard Space Shipbreaker, uh, 1674. I don't know if that number has relevance to the game, uh, but that is the price, and it is a good one. Next up, Shovel Knight Treasure Trove. Wait, hold on. Did, wasn't that the – it was Space Engineers where you just cut off – half of the space station and just blasted off into the nothingness. Yeah. I just threw a bunch of engines on something. Was that it? I think it was. You just like cut it off like halfway through, put engines on it. And then you're like, Hey guys. And then like half of our space station just, <laughs> just blasted that. off. Into space. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, we don't guys. need that part. Uh, it's extraneous. Um, I have not played this version, but the original shovel Knight uh, was, What's I remember Andy over there fucking is an institution. I own it on like platform everything. Uh, a it is force. a tour de force. It is an homage, a pastiche of it's like original three years side of Andy scrolling telling us to play Shovel Knight. <laughs> the original one came out in like 2000 and forever ago. Um, I think Treasure Trove came out like 2014, uh, but it's the second one. I'm not sure. Adam and I, we were actually able to co-op Shovel Knight, which is fantastic because it means you die a million times more because you're knocking <laughs> each other into holes on purpose. Uh, but that game is, yes, a uh, tour de force. Um, pardon my French. 16 tons. Um, it is twenty one ninety nine. Um, if you like any kind of puzzle platformer, the old Mega Mans, mm. the old old Zelda that's a bad reference. Zelda or if two. you're just a shovel enthusiast. Yeah. You're a knight with it's a, a game shovel. for you. And you have to fight evil. And you win. It's, it's just such a fucking solid. And the music. Side-scrolling right? platformer. So good. Yeah. Um, last up on my list is Kenshi. Kenshi is an experience. Um, Kenshi is, if you took like Mountain Blade and. Ooh, okay. Uh, I don't feel like you're allowed to reference other obscure games people probably haven't played. In Mount, dude, Mountain Blade Two came out and it was it was huge. Was it? A lot of people played. Mountain okay, Blade. all right, yeah, then yeah. I res- rescinded. If people know what my Mountain indie Blade iceberg, is. I, I, I'm I'm with Russ on this. I, I have rose colored glasses. I'm with Russ on this for the most. I'll part. be like, oh you, yeah, Celeste. Everybody, yeah, heard you, of Celeste, yeah. Well, right? I've heard of Celeste. Yeah. that's also another big game, but but most people have not heard of Celeste. I've heard of Mountain um, Blade. So I, I mean, it was on the Game Blade. Awards. Yeah. Like, it won awards in the Game yeah. Awards. You're so biased because no Justin enough. and Mick and fucking John John play Mountain exactly Blade all the time. Yeah, that's how I heard about it. I'm just saying we're a niche group. I'm saying I, I didn't know that Mountain Blade was known amongst oh, the okay. the plebs, mm-hmm. the gaming plebs. Chats, uh, that's <laughs> fucking Justin. That's Justin. <laughs> fucking jackass. Just. Kenshi is a game, uh, solo or squad based overworld. You are in this weird semi 
biopunk Japanese world where you can do whatever you want. It's a full sim game. You can become a samurai and start a mercenary band and run around and fight other people. You can cut off all your limbs and be a torso and crawl around and get captured by slavers and live in a cage. Uh, you can become said slavers and fight uh, and then get torsos of my own things. And if a torso is not enough, you can get bionic arms and become Torsolo. Everybody Google Torsolo, search it up on YouTube by Ambiguous Amphibian. It is something I only want bionic life. arms if they start off with tiny chicken arms and then oh, I they find do. my chi. And Remember when we were talking about Mortal Kombat yeah. and he had the weird <laughs> little metal arm? That's like that's how they start, right? Okay. Um, but yeah, Kenshi is a full immersive sim like you would have like deus ex or something but it's one of those things you can do kind of whatever you want it's hard um you're gonna get molly wall up to left and right you know mm-hmm. but uh what is the what is the 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 gooey that this is it's kind of it kind of looks like a rts with a rotatable camera you can zoom way out or in and see your little dude and you can control multiple people you can have your own little clan Jesus, that um, sounds. I can't believe I've never heard of this. Yeah. It sounds it, bananas. Um, we'll look up some of these shows for these games. Um, I was also going to throw a cruelty squad on the list. And now that Russ broke the five limit, I feel it is within my rights to. Um, broke the seal. Google cruelty squad. That's all I'm going to say. It's your turn. All right. Uh, so my list is. Uh, Terrible. Roblox. Eclectic. Okay. Fortnite. Roblox. It's a fancy <laughs> word for bad. Terraria. <laughs> Minecraft. The I think these are games that everybody should play. And SpongeBob. I think they are important titles in their genre. And I love the ever looking lo, ever looking, ever loving shit out of them. The ever looking flock. All of that. The ever looking um, flock. So I basically I took the games that I had the most time played and looked up their sale prices. Um Satisfactory. I have a few hundred hours in Satisfactory. Love that game. That's down from its normal price of, uh, I believe it's $30, and it's $21 right now. And it was worth Damn. $30. 100%. Yeah, both you and I, over 100 hours, easy in that. Easily. I mean, we we have, like we were talking about earlier, we have actual weeks worth of time spent yeah. make it, building our our. But the numbers, factories. Andy, what do the numbers be? I, I mean, if you don't get enough work at work. Yeah. Let me suggest you download Work Sim <laughs> and start playing Work Sim. If you haven't ha- done enough math today, mm-hmm. pick the up real Satisfactory. The question was, it, was it Satisfactory? Oh, my God, yeah. Okay. Dude, when I, everything gets running and you have your ratios correct and you're pumping out 17.8 reinforced steel plates a minute, your dick is hard. Hard. Mine's rescinded inside my body. <laughs> <laughs> well, something's, make, something's wrong with your core and your mass. It can, is. The ratio is something off. other than plates. Oh, yeah. Concrete beams, gunpowder, uh, more steel. There you go. There's so, there's so much steel. to do. Scaffolding. Super plastics. plastics. Yeah. Super <laughs> plastics. Uh, ammonium uh, shavings for your nitrate and your nuclear fuel. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, there's dude, dogs. Okay. Oh. oh, hey, I'm in now. I'm in. They're alien Yeah, dogs. and you get to pet them. Can Okay. It's a great game. Uh, the next one on the list, Deep Rock Galactic. Yeah. Um, mm. now it's, a, it's a game that I meant to pick up for a long time, and Nick finally, you know, rock made, us pull the, <laughs> he made us pull the trigger on it. Did I hear a rock and stone? Rock and stone? Yeah! yeah! So it's... Fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not allowed to be a dwarf. There's I've already I mean. I've already put almost Got 100 hours into the game, here. and I just picked it up a couple weeks ago. I love this game. Um, I find myself playing it outside of multiplayer, and just I have technically right now I have no more assignments to do in this game. I like I've run dry of new content because it comes out uh, weekly. You're working overtime. We I'm working about running overtime dry beforehand. Yeah. That's true. I, I run dry, um, but I continue to play. I That's I, how you do it. I enjoy this game so much that despite not having much in the way of progression, I'm just playing it to ha- because I find it to be fun. And that, oh, yeah. I think, is the mark of a good game. Mm-hmm. Word. Yeah. Um, it's, it's full of character. There is so much to be done in that game, even though I just said that I, 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 I overdid it. Uh, there's still so much to be done in that game. There's so much to unlock. It's got so many great systems integrated into it, and it's it, 
just the character involved in in such a like lovingly made package is worth the fourteen ninety nine that it is right now. It's fifty percent off. So just pull the, the trigger steel. on it. Any of you are playing the new Halo and you're mad about the season pass they've got and all the colored issues and armor things. Season pass and DRT is free. free. It is free. I like that. Like really free. You get Hulk Hogan's hat. True. What? Yeah, brother. Yeah. You mean yeah, brother Dana? Rain of blood, <laughs> yeah, brother. Yeah, 100%. Um, the next one on my list is Darksiders, uh, specifically the War Mastered Edition. It's just the remastered uh, high-resolution version of it. Um, on top of that, I liked the first one the most out of the the series. I haven't played the third one. I didn't like. I didn't enjoy the second one as much. I'm in the minority, though. Um, Darksiders 2 has been better reviewed Hold than down. the original Darksiders. Um, so I think the majority of people will like that one. If you're one of those people, the Darksiders Blades and Whip franchise pack is all three of the main games for twenty one twenty five. That's eighty two percent off for three games that are all excellent. If you liked uh, um, Zelda sixty four that style of play, oh, yeah. Darksiders is just like a solid double solid double cheeseburger version of that, right? It's 100%. not going to blow your socks off, but it's good, and there's a lot of it, mm. and just doing puzzle okay. dungeons and oh, yeah. getting it's, unique items to do stuff. It's yeah. evil Zelda. I feel yeah. personally wounded in my soul that you just referred to that as Zelda 64. <laughs> I, I literally could not remember the title <laughs> of it, and I'm going to blame the alcohol. That's I fair. tried to That's pass fair. it off really quickly. It didn't work. It was caught. Yeah, so it was it was caught. 64. I almost said a link to the past. And I was like, no, that's not right. Quick numbers. Quick numbers. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, just a, another another great game uh, or a series of games, if you're into it, uh, that, I, that I really love. Um, next up on the list is Daisy. Mm. Uh, yeah. It's not yeah. everybody's cup of tea, but if you've ever thought about pulling the trigger on Daisy, pull the trigger now. And then pull it later at Andy again accidentally. That's, that's true. Uh, it, it almost never goes on sale. So at twenty six ninety nine, it's a steal. It's 40% off right now. There's new content come out. Uh, that game really almost never goes on sale. It almost never that's goes on so, sale. What? what? But it's still, I thought the game was free. It's a popular title, man. Z is the last letter. I mean, what are you going to do? That's one of the things I noticed the most about when I was browsing the Steam sale and stuff is that I had played a lot of these games, and I've seen these price tags, and I'm like, I didn't buy this game. I didn't buy this game. Right. I didn't buy this game. And it's because I realized I played most of them for free on the X, the Microsoft Game Pass. Right, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. So that's the real winner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the real winner is Game Pass, which right now if you buy it on Amazon, it's like 30% off for a three-month pass. So uh, it's only what fifteen bucks a month normally. Yeah, fifteen bucks a month, and I think for the three months it's twenty five dollars right now. If you buy it through Amazon, like the game card, it's pretty good. Yeah, it's really good. Um, so I've Daisy is by far my most played thing on Steam that isn't like a like a like a clicker simulator. Now outside, you said you put in over two thousand hours. I have in the over Daisy. two thousand hours in Daisy. I that is a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. Well, that's like I love that game. That's like two hundred and fifty-eight hour work shifts you put yeah. into that game. That's almost a year. Yeah. of work when shifts. Did you get it? Uh, probably about two years ago now. Yeah, I got about eight hundred hours in Stellaris. I think that's about as close as my recent Steam titles have gotten. I mean, so between, so basically, I bought it about right at so. Just before we took our hiatus for the podcast. Um, is, is when I purchased it. Yeah. yeah. So I bought it, I bought it just pre COVID. Um, and that was my COVID game. I no life that like I did world of Warcraft. Yeah. Um, Jesus Christ. Oh yeah. Dude, the amount, the amount of fun that I get out of the player interaction in that it's, it's, it's a different game every single time you play it. It's fucking fantastic. If you're into multiplayer games that are extremely punishing, um, but also extremely rewarding in their player interaction and in um, like self sufficiency, then you'll be into DayZ. It's it's just it's a lot of fun. It's janky, but in uh, in mostly uh, kind of lovable ways. Um, you understand the jank. Um, I I feel like DayZ is very similar in approaching that line of playing. Path of Exile on hardcore mode. You're you're literally putting yourself in a position to where like any moment you just might die, lose all the progress. Listen, okay. So I beat Ikaruga. 
What the? F- <laughs> so <laughs> bless you, tight. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it is. It's like On one of the most difficulty? ultimate bullet hells. I couldn't. I couldn't it's tell. You. It was standard. a long time ago. I never fucking beat Ikaruga. Yeah. Um. So I am into punishing myself a little bit in video games. Um, yeah. Well. So, uh, last on the list is Bastion. Oh, is that on? Well, I mean, how much does that even cost now? Three dollars. It's three dollars on sale right now. So you have to buy Bastion. Fuck are you listening to this podcast? Go play Bastion for three dollars. That's not true. Finish listening to this, but that should be the first thing you do afterwards. (laughs) Listen to the podcast. No, don't listen to the podcast while you watch Bastion. You have that is a one hundred percent mind dedication. Is is Bastion. When we were look, listening and talking about the mining songs and stuff, the Nick, the one Nick showed us yeah. immediately started making me think of Build the Wall. Yep. Yeah. I dig my hole, you build uh, a wall. The, so you want to talk about a soundtrack that every song is an earworm and it's the kind of thing that you wake up to stuck in your head? Uh, I Bastion. Bastion I, I'd hear a song and I'd pause the game and I'd go run across the other side of the house and sit on the piano and figure it out because it was so catchy. It's like, I need to know how to play this song. Well... The soundtrack for Bastion is also 99 cents. Or what you can do, which is smarter, um, is get the Super Giant collection. It's all of the Super Giant games oh, for 3735. So you Bastion. get Bastion, Transistor, Pyre, and Hades. Hades. Oh, Hades was on my original list. Yeah, yeah, and the original wow. game was like 30 bucks, wasn't it? Hades is forty dollars normally. Yeah, so you get you get their entire collection for less than the cost of Hades. There was a number of games that I probably feel were worthy of the top five to pick up while they're on sale, but I hadn't I haven't played them and I didn't feel sure like I should suggest games. And Hades was definitely one of the games where like I, there's been too much praise, and I've seen myself some gameplay to know that like that's a really solid game. Yeah. Looks, it looks like a fun. I, I'm. I will end up playing Hades probably in the next like couple months, without it. It's doubt. on sale. So I, ha- <clears throat> I also have it. If we can get the Steam link, yeah. family link, I can just let you install and play it. I I haven't played Hades yet, um, but it's because uh, it's because I know you I'm going to treat it like Bastion. Oh. It's going, or I'm going to treat it like Daisy. Yeah, <laughs> it's gonna be a game. Because it's infinitely it's playable, right? Yeah, it's value. a roguelite. Yep. So it's going to be one of those games that is so well made and is right up my fucking alley mm-hmm. that it's going to be the only goddamn game I play for like six months. So I like I have to... This I, It's got to be a special time of the year for me to pick up Hades. It's special time of the year. When Andy's he molts. Annual <laughs> when, I, molting. when I molt. Yeah, when, yeah okay. when, I've got, when I've got to sequester myself to molt. When the skin gets so loose Do, uh, and we you should be look point, like right? a goose. Oh, almost there. I wanna, so real quick, I want to go through that list. Uh, if you're into uh, AAA games. Um, fuck off. No. Deathloop, <laughs> Cyberpunk, Death Stranding, no, Days Gone. Don't say Cyberpunk. It, no. If you wanted Cyberpunk, it's 50% off. Cyberpunk was still fun for me. Yeah. Horizon Zero Dawn, Disco Her Elysium, Half-Life fun. Alex. Uh, Control Ultimate Edition, Red Dead Redemption 2, uh, Back for Blood is also on sale. Like, that's brand new. Yeah, Deathloop is weird. brand new. Um, Inscription, brand new on sale. GTA 5 was on sale. It, yes. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, also brand new on sale. Resident Evil Village 2, like, less than three months old now, on sale. Um, yeah. Outer Wilds, Yakuza, don't, don't, like a dragon. Don't play Outer Wilds. Do you play Outer Wilds? Don't play Outer Worlds. Yes. Oh, yeah. That's, that's the one my you're bad. thinking. Yeah, of. yeah, it was. Uh, uh, Borderlands YouTube. 3, 15 bucks. Doom Eternal is 15 fucking dollars. What? Uh, hey, and guys, Metro Exodus. New World is twenty nine ninety nine. I saw that. It's discounted. <laughs> oh, God. New I almost threw Humankind on my list, but I was getting a little too 4 xy Humankind is if someone really liked Civilization but wanted to play a game that wasn't Civilization, check it out. Yeah. Okay. Sabo and chat brings up out. games that were very I, I only reason I didn't list them is because I wouldn't believe that people hadn't played them yet, which is God of War. Yeah, that's what something I was thinking about too. But and we dude, only get five games. Well, and we had to choose from the Steam selection. God of War isn't on there until January, uh, oh. unfortunately. Um, uh, Dragon's Dogma was going to be on my list if it didn't fall into that category. If I haven't played it, but I know mm. that it's a good enough game that you should definitely Some check it out. The one I've got. He brings up Don't Starve Together. There's new content out for Don't Starve Together where yeah. they got together with the Terraria devs and made new content. And they didn't starve. It's a, it's a beautiful symbiotic was, relationship uh, now. It was a game we were talking about last night, actually. 
j- tonight actually was it tonight yeah um three hours ago don't starve is like my third most played game it beats daisy so uh, tim burton made a survival game yeah yeah that's All a right. very accurate description right yeah it is uh but it is break time Oh, oh yeah. good. Time for break. I have, I have yeah. to do that. When we come back, we're going to come with Nick's. Uh, yeah, we haven't we made a name for it. We'll call it choose your character for now, I uh, suppose. Yeah, I've been telling the Thought Thunderdome character. Grids. There you go. Oh, no, there's something better. I, I'm i not. We can do better. Yeah. yeah, but we have one more week of this. <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> this is a regular segment now. Okay. What are you talking right. about? No, we have one more week, and then it starts over. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll see what the news looks like. Uh, but yeah, break time. True crimes. Bum, bum. Bum, bum. So, my grid is ready. My body is prepared. Are you all ready? Yes. Yep. I can't speak to that. I just got to hit a button. Are you ready for the button? Hit the button. Y'all ready for it's this? It's 2046. Or... While playing Tesla's brand new real VR MMO, you fail to read the fine print EULA and royally fuck up. I know who all these people are. You have since been put on trial for impersonation of an officer, first degree arson, and tax fraud. These are your potential attorneys. Pick one. Oh, my God. From this list, we have businessman extraordinaire Mr. Torg from Borderlands. <laughs> we have private eye film noir detective Nick Valentine from Fallout. We have another businessman mm. in the form of, of Tom Nook. We have swarthy, picture, by the way. <laughs> silver-tongued uh, gentleman in uh, Dutch Vanderland. We have the logical murder bot, HK-47, from KOTOR. We have the intrepid genocidal scientist, uh, Morden Solis, from Mass Effect. Um, another genocidal uh, scientist, quote-unquote, in GLaDOS from Portal. And finally, the hacking portly mastermind, uh, Lester Crest, from GTA Five. Fuck. I was going to have more adenums and... Uh, restrictions, but <laughs> it's mostly you're in a weird game world. You've committed a bunch of crimes, and these are your characters for your attorney. Who do you think is going to get you out? Easy. I got Easy? this. 25 years in the future, we have fully digressed into fucking idiocracy mode. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, it's Tom Nook. <laughs> that's that's the way our country... Tom Nook, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> this is This is well on the path of potential futures for the United States of America. So Mr. Torg, Torg yep. is, is my fucking Camacho for mm-hmm. defending me in And I was court. thinking, the dude runs an <laughs> interstellar gun business. Yeah. Like, you know, he's got lawyers on retainer. He's not a lawyer himself, but he had to get to the top somehow, right? Yeah. yeah. He might be all muscle on the outside, but man. On <laughs> he's the inside, entrepreneur. Yeah. 100% entre- entrepreneur. He's the businessman doing business. He once sent me on a quest to blow up the ocean. So, yeah, dude knows what he's about. Is that a it crime? It was business time. Who knows? On the same hand, though, we've got a lot of really smart people and a lot of really clever and a yes. lot of very charismatic people on this list. I tried to find a good axis of charismatic to raw logic. Um, there was a lot of really good fitting characters I couldn't put on the list, namely a lot of lawyers. There's a lot of video game <laughs> lawyers. Uh, that would have been too easy. Um, and a lot of characters had to miss because I don't think the rest of these guys would have necessarily known who they yeah, were. Where's my ace attorney, man? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's the Phoenix Wright yeah. courtroom in the background. Yeah. I had to put that in there. Um, exactly. Your honor, I find the meat bag innocent of these charges, right? Like he might end up just shooting the jury, but they can't call you guilty if they're dead. Right. Good point. I feel like Tom Tom Nook's going to work because he's just going to fucking Charlie Brown noises at the jury and no one's going to know what the fuck he's saying. (laughs) But I mean... He gets a speech box. I mean, again, the whole idea that, you know, language isn't a barrier and these people need to do their job to try to get you free to their best of their ability, right? So, I mean, Tom Nook's got the the grease to put in the palms, baby. I mean... He is another businessman and he... I don't know if he has... uh, The bells to money ratio, Borderlands, I don't know if he's richer than Mr. Torg or not. Probably, probably not. He could probably cover your tax fraud, and you know he's good for it. I mean, yeah. assuredly not. Like, right, being one of the top. If we're going to talk on who has the most money for Think greasing. about the inflation, though, in Borderlands, right? I mean, it takes a lot to be on so, top for one of, the, like, the five gun companies in Borderlands. Am I actually innocent of these crimes? Does it matter? It, it does to a couple of these characters, I feel like. Nick Valentine is not going to be inclined to help. Like, I mean, Nick Valentine, be, he's a private eye. He's okay, got some So the impersonation shit. of an officer was 
a mischaracterization. The first degree arson. I mean, it's a little bit of fire. It's a little uh, bit of the fire. tax fraud you blacked out for. Okay. <laughs> so like, I mean, and depending on like on the arson, if anybody got hurt and like, Oh, Morden, it's first degree arson. You're burning buildings that people are normally in all okay. the time. Uh, so then Morden himself like is just going to kill you. Like he's just, he's like, well, logically. This, this is, this is not post genocide empathy. This is like solace in his prime. Right. He's like, ah, I, I commit a little genocide, whatever. I'm science. Yeah. But like it has to be done for a reason. Did like ultimately did me burning those people serve a greater good? Because At the end of the it, day, all these people okay. have to do their best job. Okay. Fair their enough. Ability okay. To be fair your enough. Attorney. Uh, I just wanted to, I just wanted to double check on a couple of things because I don't want to get shot in the face by Morden Solis. Um, I almost put Miranda up there for her sheer fucking panache and charisma, but Morden Solis, man. I mean, Gladys is serving up the best cake. Uh, that could uh, matter for the jury. It's very possible. Fruit flies. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was waiting. just how excited you were at cake. <laughs> Uh, Lester, I mean, he stole from... He knows crime. He knows yeah. crime. That's the, dude, that's the secret ingredient, is mm -hmm. crime. I think Lester might have the sauce. Um, so... Like, if you're gonna try to pay off the jury. Yeah. My initial leanings, um, I'm, I'm leaning towards, Le like, I mean, Rockstar's taking it, I think, tonight for me. I'm leaning towards Lester and, and, and Dutch Vanderland, actually, are, are my... Dutch was a ruse. I think he's all charisma, no substance. Yeah, no, I mean, he's all, like... <sighs> and that's such a gamble. Like, if his charisma doesn't pay off... You fell for the red herring, you fool. Now you get Danny DeVito, you fuckstick. <laughs> you know, it's, I mean, that's fair. Like, I, that's yeah, where, I mean... No, he's he's all he's all sizzle and very little steak, but... That, that, sometimes that wins. Like, I mean, you gotta it does. convince the jury. I'm thinking ahead, like, 2046, truth is relative, baby. Uh, and nobody knows how they to twist... They it from the dictionary. You go with Lester because you're not gonna go to trial. Yeah. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Uh, again, I feel gets Lester, Lester is that's right. my... I, I think I'm leaning towards Lester. Honestly, it'd be the um, same for HK47. It's not that you wouldn't go to trial. It's that every time they tried to put you on trial, he would keep killing people. Yeah. And your crimes Don't would get worry, larger, Master. but you'd never end up in jail. Yeah. <laughs> now, GLaDOS is gonna give you an escape hatch under you during trial. That's like, exactly. like the facility is going to expand under the courthouse. So you're gonna disappear under a floor tile uh never to be seen again but you have to deal with the like you know rest now of your life hiding. and torture yeah of, under glados it might so. just be the fact that like you're gonna be found guilty but at the last minute that hatch opens up and now like now that you've done <laughs> that psychological torture you you're gonna go through the physical torture yeah absolutely it's just one of the other trials yeah. but she's gonna turn the entire jury into lemons well, so <laughs> she's gonna burn the court down. burn the, burn the court <laughs> down <laughs> So, I, I don't know the Mass Effect character at all to make yeah, me about that person. I, he I, is one of the best scientists in the universe. Okay. Uh, he kind of sort of maybe committed genocide by inventing a genetic plague for the Krogans. I mean, if you can science me out of anything, it. I'll take that option. But he is the smartest person on this list. Hands really? down. Oh. Yeah. I mean, if someone's going to find a loophole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, HK47 might give him a run for his money just because he's a droid. Uh, I'd say Gladys as well, but she's clearly got some corrupt code in there. <laughs> and I don't think, I think she's air gapped from the internet, hopefully. So, but she's yeah. too much of a wild card to choose. But really funny. Like, you're going to laugh the whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know? Man, this is good. This is really good. You killed good. 36 people in an apartment fire, but fuck, is she not slaying the audience? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, really, at the end of the day, she uh, very much the most charismatic in this group, I think. Even even more charismatic than Dutch Vanderlyn? Dutch is smarmy. Yeah. yeah. Smarmy. That, that's true. Tracks. That rubs people the wrong way. Yeah. It's too much smarm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he used to lay off that smarm sauce. Your smarm level is too great. It, I, I thought a little bit about it. I thought about making up the jury, but then that would get a little complicated. Because it really kind of depends, right? But... If you assume a jury of your peers is 2046, Gen Z is old now. Like, where are the memes? Who knows what humor is like? And I mean, I stuff. still stand by my first choice. We're looking at 25 years in our future. This trial, I'm assuming, is part of the real VR MMO stuff. Yeah. 
Like it's not a real life trial for stuff that you did in the the MMO. It's that you committed virtual. Oh, you crimes. did stuff in VR, but it ended up causing real life crimes. Okay, I well, don't know how, but, but we now have the new neural net chip in our head, so everything we're doing is all in VR anyway. Yeah. So your court trial is going to be in VR, in which case, fucking Zoomers are going to love fucking Torg. He's mm-hmm. going to be in there just fucking cursing up a storm and blaming fucking seals for the problem. <laughs> I don't know. Distraction techniques. But Lester's going to bring down the mainframe. Yeah. I, 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 s- s- smart choice, Lester, obviously. Because I, like I said, I think he'll get you. Like, you want him to go to trial. Yeah. That dude's just going to. You're going to get off. Yep. He's going to be on the computer. And he's going to be like, all right, I need you to drop this package off somewhere. And you're going to be like, okay. And then you're like, all right, you're good. No more trial. Don't worry about it. Uh, you're going to owe him weeks. You're oh, gonna you're going to owe, owe him. him. Yeah. Yeah. Many a crooked dick BJ is in your future. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Absolutely. He is a cripple. And as all cripples have crooked, crooked dicks. I mean, like <laughs> we're talking like you look at his cane and you know, family friendly you know. podcast, <laughs> video game tango, at Twitter, YouTube. Oh no. Uh, we are adults <laughs> only in everything. That's how you used yeah. to identify cripples was by their crooked dick. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you're feeling around in the dark, how else are you going to know, right? Yep. That. Wow. <sighs> yep. That's. Uh, <laughs> when you get Josh, you know you've done well. Wow. Right. <laughs> uh, now, you got to be careful not to confuse it with a candy cane while it's in your mouth. You want it to dissolve. Yeah. You don't. You do not bite. Do not bite. Lester is going to charge you so much if you bite. Do we feel no like teeth. Nick Valentine has any play here? I don't. I don't. Oh, wait. Think- no, no, no. That's the android. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. He's he's going to be smart like an android. <laughs> Plus he's a detective. He is a detective. He is essentially like lawful good, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. I didn't play Fallout 4. So. Yeah, yeah, chaotic good because he's forced to. He'd be lawful good if people accepted him. Gotcha. He's yeah. outside of society's bounds, so he's, Yeah. He's a dirty synth. Lawful neutral maybe. Uh, mm, cuz he applies to his own like set he's of still rules good. But adamantly to he's them. De- yeah, he's definitely he's still, still good. Good, but yeah, modern society and fallout considers That'd be him neutral a, good then, right? Uh, yeah, I, actually neutral good might be more neutral good. Yeah, yeah. Cuz yeah. chaotic, he's not that he's not that freewheeling. I, I would say lawful Morden kind of fits the mold for lawful neutral. Who the fuck uh, is Morden? He's Morden the, Solus is the the little Solarian frog, alien, the frog, ah, the gotcha. frog man. Yeah. Um the Mon Cal. Yeah. 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 It's a trap. No, uh, he, uh, yeah, I would say he's kind of like lawful neutral because he does what he believes is for the best of society. It's a long-term thinker. His yeah. own ethos is what he adheres to the most regarding, regardless of what society thinks is the actual template. It's because he's so smart. His own ethos is usually the most long-term correct one. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. sounds lawful neutral. Yeah. I mean... That's a Thanos mindset. Yeah. Could easily be. <clears throat> you know, I honestly didn't have one in mind when I made this. I think... They've kind of all got their weird strengths. Yeah. yeah, no, it's. I mean, this is this is hard to choose from, but I think I'm. I think my final decision is going to be Lester. All right, so we got a Mr. Torg, a Lester. What are you thinking, Andy? Lester. A Lester. Yep. I'd honestly have to probably pick Borden Solis because if they're under the duress of having to do their best to get you out of this, he'd find a loophole. You do have a lot of faith in twenty forty six humanity. Oh, I'm talking specifically legal code. Oh, okay, that's fair. Like, I mean, yeah, he, you know, not a loophole in regarding the jury, but he'd find a way to get a the legal trial thrown, ho- mm-hmm. thrown out. Yeah, that'd be the legal way of getting the trial done. So it's like if you want to go legal recourse, your case is thrown out under Morden, uh, shady, thrown out of trial yeah. through intimidation. Why do the jurors keep dying? Yeah. <laughs> My my first reaction is to go as chaotic as possible. So I my 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 gut reaction is to go Glados, right? Okay, yeah, <laughs> that is the most chaotic. HK yeah. is a HK loophole. and Glados are both the most chaotic choices. It's like you're going to make him innocent if you want to leave this courtroom. <laughs> Statement. <Yeah. laughs> and I I like the idea of uh you know of uh massively televised uh court case involving Glados. So yeah, yeah. that'd be something else. Mm, right, I like it. Well done, well done, sir. It's very good. Thank you. 
We got Andy's up next week. We got mine next week. Mm-hmm. Yes. Looking Ooh. forward to that one. I still have, I, I have so many ideas that I have not settled on yet because none of them feel good enough. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so I do want to see impregnated a clown. That's how it starts. Yeah. Clissy. I started helping. with a clissy. I'm helping. <laughs> it all starts with a clissy. Um, do, do we want to do uh, a recap of the media that we've consumed over the last week? I was going to say, yeah, we've got, <clears throat> we've got some time. So um, one of the things we talked about over the last few weeks um, has been Cowboy Bebop. Yes. The live Cowboy action Bebop. version. Uh, we talked last week about Arcane, the League of Legends uh, miniseries on Netflix. Pause this. Go watch it. And stop telling people to pause our podcast. <laughs> oh, shit in your <laughs> mouth. Reverse psychology. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I personally, I have not started Arcane, but I have started Cowboy Bebop. Um, I was just in, I was a little bit more in the mood for some Bebop. I get it. I get it. Um, <clears throat> my thoughts on it are, I like it so far. Good. I'm not in love with it. Because it does stay relatively close to the source material, from what I remember, at least. Um, I have watched the the first episode of the animated Cowboy Bebop fairly recently, and yeah, it's it stays pretty close to the source material. I heard they fucked up Julia. Uh, how is she even? Have they? What? So she's such a like background and ciliary character that's so yeah weird they made here. her not that oh. yes that is true i don't know the specifics i just heard a little bit about it and it, it's just concerning because like any specifics that are a spoiler like this driving force for spike yeah and that's about it it's and it's an interesting by change her more important it makes me wonder where the hell is this story gonna go that, that see that's that's kind of what i like mm-hmm. about it so far is experience bebop over again because it's changed enough that it feels different yeah ex- exactly now i i was talking to russ about copy copy bebop a few nights ago and i i wasn't looking forward to this series too much because a i don't know how you pull off cowboy bebop mm-hmm. in live, live action. action yeah b i i haven't gone back and watched cowboy bebop i've had, I've had the hankering right um at least in recent years i haven't i i i watched it repeatedly initially um i watched and it haven't, about four years ago yeah the last time i saw it i haven't gone back to it since i've i've started it so i've i've watched the first couple you know couple episodes um a few times in more recent years but i stop because cowboy bebop has such a like special place in yeah. my heart man nostalgia. um that i don't want to play with them with the nostalgia uh mm-hmm. at all um i remember Vaguely, I I remember everything that happened very vaguely. So the way it all ties together in my head, I, I have questions about, and that's what brings me to try and rewatch this to try and rewatch the series again. But I like I I do inevitably stop on like the second episode. And it's like okay, I remember enough. I, I feel confident that I remember enough. I don't need to go back and potentially tarnish that uh, that memory. Not that I think it's bad. At all, uh, I I love those first couple episodes, but um, are it, you guys it, liking it? It's special. I am really liking it, actually. We're doing portal style high fives according to the <laughs> chat. Uh, I, I haven't watched Cowboy Bebop yet. I, I'm actually glad though because I I want to hear what your guys' opinions right. are, and then I'll come back next week and tell you what's actually true. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> the truth. I got five episodes into it. And uh, like, had, how had many to, episodes are there? Do we know? Uh, ten, I ten. believe. Four. <laughs> He's five. I hope in. not, because <laughs> I'm like two and a half in. Um, I like it. No, I didn't watch as much of the uh, anime. Uh, yeah, you don't got the baggage. I don't got. I don't got the baggage. Um, yeah, in high school, you weren't really into the <laughs> anime stuff. But from what I've seen so far, uh, they are using almost just essentially the music from the show and that <laughs> is trying to carry it by the music well that that is it plays show is it, the music. it it's plays a big really boat. well mm-hmm. it plays really well for that um and i really i really like how uh some of the shooting uh the cinematography is done where it it kind of feels like it 
it could be an anime for a second there with how like they'll like zoom in on a on a villain and he's gripping his gun in that like really ostentatious like kind of way and then I, I don't know just some of the shooting it seems reminiscent of it is, uh, is the show shot in the same style as the trailer was uh, no no okay. no the, okay. yeah okay. the trailer is definitely what threw me off yeah uh the ta- the trailer left a bad taste in my mouth yeah i wasn't holding much the bar um, was low yeah the, the, the cinematography is actually very good yeah uh i i i like it and uh yeah i think it does i think it does the source material justice as far as the cinematography goes. Yeah. I mean, Kona in chat's talking about not going into this if we held the anime in high regard, mm-hmm. um, but possible to enjoy it if you go in without expectations. That's that's not going to be possible for me. Yes. I did hold the anime in high regard. I have a pretty high bar of expectations for the show. I already don't think that the show is going to meet those expectations uh, I remember we'll talking see. about after we watched the trailer that I had a feeling like they obviously knew that you can't convert this anime one to one to live action. Yeah. So they're trying to do their own thing. They're changing the Bebop feel to more of a '60s spy novel feel, at least for the trailer. I don't know how the show plays out. Um, and a change from the original one, to, like try not to be one to one, is a really fucking good idea. Because if they tried to like copy the anime as much as they could, it's just gonna falter, right? That uncanny valley. Yeah. So when I do watch it, I'm gonna go into it being like, "Oh, Cowboy Bebop, what's this?" <laughs> and I will we'll say see. a lot of the costumes, though, I feel like those are fucking on point. Um, I mean, I just. No, it it looks good, and is, I really is like not Faye. No, Faye in no. her fucking electric yellow bikini. Yeah, co- yes, but also no. Uh, she's she's wearing something over it. So I I already knew that they were taking that out. Yeah, it's not woke enough. The one thing I've seen, I wish I hadn't seen it, was the first time you see um, Ed, and they tried. So oh, I didn't even like, see Ed in the trailer. I didn't even think about that. I'm, oh, yeah. that's I don't remember Ed in the trailer I haven't, either. I haven't, I haven't, I'm five episodes in and I haven't seen They're Ed not going to do that so. correctly. That's so... Ugh, that's fuck, what I was fuck, worried fuck. about. Yeah. God damn it, Nick. I, I saw it and I was like, uh, I'm just going to pretend I didn't see that. Like, I hope the rest uh. of Ed in the show is good, but they try so hard to make Ed's first appearance just like the anime, but it's real life. Yeah, and it does. Not, I am. It I, does not. I, fucking Kona's right. I'm already angry. I didn't even <laughs> yeah. think about it. I saw how they fucking portrayed the other characters, and I'm like, hmm. And then uh, Nick brings up fucking Ed, and I'm like, there's I'm no, sorry. there's no fucking way that they're gonna come close to an Ed character. No, you can't. Like the the actor that they would have to get in there to do an Ed, I don't know exists. Yeah, that's fucking upsetting. God damn it. I, now, <laughs> now, although now no, I want to watch it, drunk. That's, I mean, I'm going to watch yeah. it now just if to see how badly the, they fuck up Ed. If they so. don't know, if you don't know that that actor exists and just fucking hope for the best, bro. No, man, it's Ed, Ed is quintessential to the Cowboy yeah. Bebop series. Like, so I, I fuck. fully understand where you're coming from. Um, and that's how I thought I'd feel. The funny thing is, is like my expectations for this continued to decline until they were rock bottom. And I am, <laughs> and I am. I am pleasantly surprised that it is not at absolute rock bottom for me. I'm going to go into this looking for cinematography. I'm going to go into it looking for narrative and how they changed it and Mm -hmm. see if it's any good and set design and set pieces. And I'm going to ignore everything else. And if those are good, then I will feel my time has not been wasted. I think you will be whelmed in, in those categories. Okay. I would not say overwhelmed. Okay. I would say whelmed. I'm going in they're, grognard. They're adequate. Full, full grognard. <laughs> Russ just sitting over the pistol at his computer and just <laughs> like, hits the play button. Try me, motherfucker. <laughs> um, I know I'll be disappointed if I go into anything full grognard. So. Yeshua here and our dear friend Justin have been watching Wheel of Time. Yeah, they dropped the first three episodes. And um, here, the wheel is round. The wheel is round. Uh... There are neither beginnings nor endings to the wheel, but this was a beginning. Um, as as it says, there's over, no beginning, but this I was. I did it. a little gluthing, which is Google sleuthing. Mm-hmm. Um, gluthing, yes. uh, That's cool. much like gr- <laughs> much like Groffit. Hey, much fuck like up, you fucking Clussy, shut up! I didn't invent Clussy. <laughs> I'm not on the Clussy wagon. I mean, I think we were supporting it. I like Groffit. I'm just saying. So after I did my gluthing, 
I, I don't know much about Wheel of Time, but the number one complaint seemed to be that there was a handful of changes and it was concerning for the longevity of the plot. So there are a few, like, I don't want to... I, I don't even know if that statement makes any sense because the, the the book series, there's 937 books in this series. Yep, and if roughly. they were to sneeze at the wrong time, the plot would be changed, right? Right? I no. mean, like... No. Did you read Wheel of Time? Yeah. I'm not. Okay. Oh, whoa. All but the last two written by Brandon Sanderson. Okay. I thought you said you only made it like halfway through. No, I have read... I When, when I met Justin... He introduced me to the Wheel of Time series. At the time, I was reading the R.A. Salvatore Forgotten Realms stuff, okay. and I read all of them up until they where they ended. And that was that was before Sanderson's ending and stuff because uh, <laughs> uh, Jordan Robert Jordan right Robert Jordan died before he finished the last yes. one. Yes, he rode the wheel. Yeah, the time uh, he hasn't sure. been spun back out yet. <laughs> and for the longest time, like I, I keep a I keep a particularly special place in my heart because it was something that Justin and I bonded over is our love of fantasy. Mm-hmm. And Justin had been like his big introduction to fantasy was through the Wheel of Time, and mine was through the Forgotten Realms universe. But at the end of the day, I don't think that it's a great a great series by any shape of the form. Now, I will say that also I don't think necessarily that. Uh, uh, Salvatore's Forgotten Realms books are any sort of great work of fiction, Mm -hmm. but they're highly entertaining books. Mm -hmm. It's like an action movie in a fantasy realm in literature. Mm -hmm. That's the best comparison I can make. Uh, Forgotten Realms was like, or sorry, uh, The Wheel of Time for me was like the fucking afternoon soap opera Mm. of fantasy books. And it's, I'm, I'm no, not. there is, uh, especially like in the sixth and seventh book, there's a lot of like, cause all of a sudden they're like, ah, oh, we got to inject some fucking fresh blood into this. And like some new characters come in and then some like weird shit. Ha- like it uh, agreed. It's weird. I'm going to, I'm on a fucking journey though. And I need to finish. That's it. fair. And so, like, well, well, next time out, there's like 967 books and stuff. And there's a lot so, that they're going to change it. But I would also say that like, you could condense that series down yeah, you, to half you could. the size and not, you don't you need the shit that he you fucking could. put into that series. Let's get Josh's opinion. Then I have one more question sure. to ask. And, uh, I would, I would say, like, I mean, they're aging them up some, uh, and that's fine because the characters in the book, they all start at, like, 16, 17, 17, 18. One of them's, like, in maybe her 20s. So they're all they're all fairly young. So they've aged them up some. So that's fine. Um, they learn but, from Game of Thrones. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. Uh, and they're going to be, like, that first, the first book is a bit of a, a high fantasy Tolkien-esque kind of a style. And you're, then great, I, you're, you're destined for greater things. Yes. Is the, like, common trope that starts that series yes. off. And then uh, the, the it, it changes and morphs a little bit as it goes through. But the biggest thing is they've they set off with, like, an ensemble cast. So it's, like, the eight... Uh, the eight people in this group are going to be like equally focused on, and that's fine instead of just the big three. Cause there are some really interesting characters in there, but like the characters don't like start popping till like book four or five. And it's really, you can't have a character be uninteresting for three seasons on a show and expect no. them to survive. That so I get work. that. Yeah. It's fine. Um, but there's a few things where I was like, man, I feel like you're doing that character dirt. I don't want to like, cause I don't want to get into specifics of it, but I will say, um, that how they're doing Perrin, I do not like right off the bat. I, I do not like what they did to poor Perrin right off the bat. Um, however, I am really enjoying how they're making that, uh, the, the one power that's magic system, how that looked on TV. I've, oh man, I liked that. That's kind of how I pictured it in my in my mind, and it was it was it was good. It was good. I liked that. I like the fact that it's been a long, long time since I've read them, and I've forgotten nearly everything from that series. So that my bar for and I that will I, age you. Well, so and my expectations for what coming out of the show now have been set so low because from a lack of memory and the fact that I didn't enjoy the book that they don't really have to do much to exceed that. I do look forward to watching Wheel of Time because I think that it will exceed my expectations for an entertaining fantasy show. So I'm looking forward to actually sitting down and watching that. Yes. Um, oh yeah, especially with there's there's a 
the fantasy pool in entertainment media is small <laughs> and it's it's mostly garbage right like i watched i i skimmed with a net netflix mm-hmm. over the last two months looking for something of substance that wasn't i don't know werewolf dicks whatever the fuck yeah. they've got up there and it Werewolf-facts.com. is slim pickings. did you watch the I, I, for, I forgot the name of it already but there's a series that the netflix has about um like kind of a weird post-industrial era and the countries are split by like this magic riff. Yeah. That's full of, yeah. Uh, I, I enjoyed that. That's, it was, so that's, uh, that's one of the few things I've was seen that, that was like actually surprisingly enjoyable. Um, I also forget what it's called, but like that's, that was that shadow was, and bone. Yes. That was surprisingly decent, Yeah, but they did, they did stray into areas that make me dislike a television series. It's like, we're getting too into the yeah. soap opery kind of stuff. I think Josh would really like this. Um, it takes a lot of its lore from, um, 18th, 19th century Russia. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. <clears throat> that's fun. Um, but no, it's got this blades in the dark, um, heist movie, Mixed with Ebron style kind of Magitech punk yeah. tech, but then also kind of overlaid with a little bit of CW drama. Yes, um, that's, 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 that's I mean, very that's, good. It, it's it's a tampering on the entire thing, but I mean, it, it is solid. And as far as like world building goes, it's really neat. And it's one of those shows where it's got like two groups of characters that are going through the plot side by side, but they don't necessarily always like intermeet. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of them is straight up like Blades in the Dark. Like the the crows are this like gang of thieves, and it's that's, like I mean oh that's even a, yeah, that's a yeah, blaze in the dark exactly. Yeah. Crows? It's, it's straight from blaze of the dark. <laughs> two crows, yeah. crows. two crows uh, fight milk. I will always say, I'll also say that I really like how the Mydral, uh looks, the fade, the shadow See, man. You're saying words, and they literally bring nothing to my head. <laughs> yeah, my uh, I dug that's how much I how that I dug how they looked. Uh, the troll locks were a, a hardy medium. Um, my I question. Feel, I feel like that could have been better, but I don't. I'm not in. I'm not in costume design, so maybe Is, I don't know. On a scale from reminding me starkly of Game of Thrones post season four to making me forget Game of Thrones ever existed, where do you feel Wheel of Time is going to land, given what you've seen so far? On a one to ten. Game of Thrones scale. Where's this is winter important. coming? This is, this is that's a good question because uh, I got reminded of Game of Thrones today talking to Adam, and I unconsciously just started cursing. I couldn't finish my sentence. I was like, "Oh man, you've never seen the intro scene to Tywin Lannister, and he's skinning the deer, and it's such a great character." Oh fuck, God, Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. So I, I feel like there's a lot of promise. Okay, I feel like there's a lot of promise. Like I said, there's. There's some liberties that were taken in like a couple of the epi- in like that first episode where I was like, "Oh, fuck!" It's mostly Perrin. They did Perrin dirty. I didn't like it. I'm not, you know. I'm just well. I will try to find a way to watch it. So, as someone who hasn't read The Wheel mm-hmm. and doesn't know anything about time, um, I can provide a non-connected uh, thing word. Untainted. I've been drinking wine that is 19 years old. I mean, maybe, maybe we don't know. There's it's it, full definitely, of fruit flies. There's um, <laughs> <laughs> a lot of promise. It's like, like a soup. Said, you know, it, I, there's a lot of there's a lot of promise there. I feel like Chat uh, points out that the show could be better than reading all 15 books was. Um, well, that's that's, and that's where I'm at. The low yeah. bar. It's a low bar. Okay, all right. So, so I probably uh, so if there's 15 total. I read 13 of them. None of them were short reads. You know, and if for those people that know uh, about fantasy literature, I've also read the Malazan Book of the Empire, so I know what long series are. So when Malazan came out that year, they ran out of paper. Yeah, like <laughs> in the world. Um, but yeah, other than that, um, I watch Arcane. Um, I'm letting oh it settle, God. and I'm going to watch it again with a notepad, and I'm going to write down every moment of foreshadowing Chekhov's gun illusion and iteration to the f- other moments in the show because 27 seconds goes by every frame before they're referencing something else that happens later in that episode or early in the show or in the future and it's, it is weaved together so masterfully that what few shortcomings that show has uh, you're blind to them it's I, honestly it's so good it was, it was good it was great yeah. i i'm i'm also looking forward to watching it again but i'm not going to take notes i just want to enjoy it <laughs> again yeah 
What have I you mean, been watching, Andy? Y'all, y'all got. Cowboy Bebop and Seinfeld. Y'all oh, yeah, gotta I forgot. Give, <laughs> it's been so long since we've talked. No, so circle. we, the uh, three of us, um, myself, Josh, and Andy, went and watched the new Ghostbusters movie. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. big nerd stuff, guys. Yeah. And I have to say, I absolutely love the movie. Yep. Like 100% oh love the movie. Like I had high expectations for what they're doing that based on the trailers and the fact that the last, we're not even going to, it's it's rude to call it a Ghostbusters movie, but the all-female cast Ghostbusters movie. Which has, I would, I mean, okay, like I just, I mean, you say the all-female cast That's Ghostbusters just how movies. we're classifying it. Yeah, it I sucks know. to classify that way, but that's what's going to yeah, be known. I know, okay, that's fair. Because you can't remember but what the title is. It's, it's it has is nothing it Ghostbusters to do. Ghostbusters 3? No, I no, wouldn't call it would, no. Uh, but it has nothing to do with it being an all-female cast. It has to do with it being a, a not funny movie, and, and that's. Not, I mean, yeah, I'm not alluding to the yeah, fact yeah, that yeah, it's yeah, yeah, because yeah, no. all the Ghostbusters are female. That it's but a no, movie. dude, there was Rust a lot of shade thrown on that movie <laughs> for that. No, there was when it first came out. There was uh, a is it lot of, is it actually I called just for the call called Ghostbusters? I, I have no idea. Regardless. That movie is just bad on all levels that you measure a movie on. It's yeah. regardless it's, of genitalia. Yeah. If you ever want to watch a fucking fantastic review of how that movie sucks, go watch um, uh, Your Movie Sucks' review of Ghostbusters. <laughs> it's it's pretty fantastic. Um, but this new one, um, I love the fact that, that uh, what they were doing was a continuation of the same universe, whereas the... Uh, Ghostbusters answer the call or whatever 2016 Ghostbusters. It was just Ghostbusters. Yeah, it was re- Ghostbusters reimagined, where they're not saying that the previous Ghostbusters movies ever exist. So uh, a reboot. It's essentially a reboot. It's terrible. That's what we needed: a reboot of Ghostbusters canon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yep. Fucking terrible. So now this is essentially Ghostbusters three. This is it, Ghostbusters yes. three, without a doubt. And what's fantastic and extremely surprising to me was that they somehow made Ghostbusters 1 and 2 more plausible. Mm. Like, literally, they go in and describe, like, what's going on in Ghostbusters 3 is a callback to what was going on in Ghostbusters 1 and 2 and makes it like, oh, shit, they made this movie make sense. That fucking never happens. It never happens that they make a fucking third movie 30 years down the road. 30 years. And like, let's stop for a minute. 30 years. 30 yeah. years. Like, well, yeah. at least. Like, I'm pretty sure Ghostbusters 2 was probably, like, in the, in 90s, the late 80s. Maybe early. It was, yeah, I think it was late, late 80s. Because I'm pretty sure, sure the first 80s. Ghostbusters movie was, like, 1984. 1989. So, yeah. So, literally wow. the end of the 30s. 32 years. Okay. Yeah. So, 32 years later. And somehow it ties in even better then Ghostbusters 1 and 2 tied helps with each other. Makes Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It helps make those movies make more right. sense. Right. And I would describe that to you, but it's like it's, it's a pretty big like plot yeah, reveal exactly. and stuff on how that works, but they did it. It's flameless, uh, or seamless. Now, I'd also say it's an all, uh, not all, mostly young person cast doing it, so clearly the movie is going to have more of a young adult feel to it. If anybody knows me, fucking hate young adult shit. He's allergic to I'm, children. Yeah, I literally fucking break out in highs whenever I do that. But this movie does it really great. Like, there's not an over amount of, like, dumbing shit down. It And, and uh, when I was talking to Sabo, actually, about it, it did remind me a lot of, like, Stranger Things. Mm-hmm. Where uh, uh, Stranger Things um, has a young cast and stuff, but, like, the jokes and the, the references and stuff and the, the way they interact with each other doesn't seem like somebody's making a caricature of children. You know, it's a realistic depiction of how human beings exist. And I feel like Ghostbusters did a really great job of doing that. Now, I don't think that some kids are naturally as funny as some of them are. Like, that's usually like a one-off every once in a while thing. Kids are pretty funny because that's how most people are. Uh, But it never dips too far into the, like, young adult, I feel stupider for watching this vein Mm. uh, or this is so unlike how normal human beings interact that I wouldn't believe this is an adult is happening uh, that they like, they did great. They did great. Like I, we literally left that theater. I was, everybody was pleased as a pickle. A hundred percent. I, uh, I went in there with medium expectations. They weren't, they weren't even as high as yours probably after watching the trailer. Yeah. Cause I, I saw where they could mess it up. Right. Were they 20, 20, one if I it. Yeah, I was scared. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Honestly, but. I thought it was going to be like uh, just another woke city kind of deal, right? Ooh. But 
it was it was so. it was minorly woke. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's got a diverse cast. Yeah, right. But that that's it. Uh, and Here's it was twenty thirty nine, and no one can sleep. But it was the good. City is woke. Everyone played a part. Uh, I didn't dislike any of the characters. In fact, one of it's one of the uh, tertiary characters. It's kind of like the 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 fucking Slimer? breakout. No, um, there's no, no Slimer. Show. Slimer's not in it. It wouldn't uh, have made any sense. Uh, okay. Okay. A young okay. man. Oh, well, yeah, I guess I don't want to give it away, but. Uh, okay. No spoilers. Spoilers. Yeah. Yeah. Spoilers. One of the kid actors does a really great job. Oh, my job. God. Oh, Lance Break some out. serious. Yeah. Punches. Yeah, dude. Nailing that kid's going it. places. Yeah. Now, real quick, I have not seen the movie, but I have sinned. Um, I watched Red Letter Media's review mm-hmm. of okay. Ghostbusters. They have said. In its entirety, the opposite of what you guys are saying. That's really? which oh, means wow. to me, it's not surprising they at do, all because Red Letter Media, sins, right? No, it's it's the Plinket guy. You know, the three dudes, the three drunk, the guy they drink and do half yeah. of the bag. The, yeah, half in the bag, gotcha, and okay. they almost rarely ever have a positive review of things. Wow, right? that's surprising so, for them. I, um, I'm now really interested to see the movie because the three of you all together liking the movie yeah. and them hating it means that there might be something there worth like investing um one of their biggest complaints was the whole walmart scene debacle this idea that you get so far in the movie and then there's this weird scene in walmart i'm not doing it justice because i was kind of half listening to it it's the marshmallow man scene right it was mostly like ah we need a new line of toys and i'm like is it it wasn't that big like It that. was comic but, relief. Yeah. It honestly just came oh. off as comic relief, okay. and I didn't see any problem with it. Fix right. your Japanese-ness, Nick. What? You're being censored. <laughs> you are a, <laughs> oh, no. uh, a, a penis right now. Dude, that. that's what that's my that's what my choose your character is going to be. You find yourself in hentai. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> <laughs> Whose squid scared. dick is that? I want to be an Akira monster. <clears throat> Solid choice. No, so one of, that scene that he they're referencing where they're in Walmart, that is one of the scenes where I chalk up to it being trying to to appeal to a more diverse audience of younger people. Mm-hmm. So okay, going back, like, yeah, it's if, a thirty year old fucking franchise, well, forty years. Yeah, and I mean, if you went back and showed Ghostbusters one or two to kids below the age of ten, I don't think they're going to be. Yeah, in, in I tried at all. showing. Uh, my niece is 14 and 9 uh, coming to America and um, the original Ghostbusters. Mm. And the thing is, the original two, the, at least the original Ghostbusters, the whole idea of the ghost busting and the spectral phenomena therein was merely a shell for the 80s humor that was that movie. Yes. It was yet another movie in the line of movies made in the 80s that was like, here's a comedy. This one's set with ghosts. Yeah. But like at the end of the day, they're like, you know, you've got, they're trying to do this business in New York. Forget about it. Pizza, pizza. Right. Mm -hmm. And so the idea of like making it any kind of serious or like having a canon and a lore like that, that wasn't on anyone's minds when that movie was made. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then 40 years fucking pass. So for them, from your guys' point of view to like somehow scrape together a canon and a lore worthy of connecting all this stuff together, like, even if the movie, in my opinion, ends up being bad, like that's a fucking feat. It's yeah. it's literally blew my mind how with like some simple exposition, not even like a main driving yeah. focus of the whole film, just like these little things like, oh, this thing happens and then this happens stuff. I'm like, you literally just clicked everything into place wow. that makes mm-hmm. the first two Ghostbusters yeah. make sense. It was even, so even impressive. the interim period yeah. of where like because the the universe that exists in is that it's it's it was the fucking eighties when all this shit happened. And so yeah, these young and now kids, it's like the kids and the mom is the daughter of Egon. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. So yeah, the yeah. kids have never even heard of the Ghostbusters because it was yeah. this weird random phenomenon shit that happened, happened in, in the eighties. Yeah. Okay. And then they but they were able to explain the fact that why the Ghostbusters aren't like a household name for everybody and yep. the fact that like ghost yeah. busting okay. doesn't exist is that what you would think would be a really big fucking yeah. deal no, exactly. you would yeah. yeah you would absolutely but okay. like i'm like wow that was that was a really tidy little ribbon yeah. just to kind of like to tie all yeah. this okay. stuff together yeah. for that reason alone i could probably forgive a lot of things wrong with that movie and i don't have to okay. yeah i don't have to yep that's good they have they have the uh a super throwback nostalgia scene towards the end and stuff that like i think all of us agree that like when when it starts that's when you hold your breath because you're like, uh oh, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's literally like, yeah. are, is this where they fuck everything up? Yeah. How much, how much cheese, how much cheese are we getting here? Yeah, and they walked a 
fine line. Mm-hmm. They like, did. It, it got really close. I'm just We're, picturing the Stranger Things kids crying with an Ecto C cooler. Right? <laughs> 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 oh, dude, that's what they needed to find in the house. Oh, <laughs> it was, yeah, was fucking Ecto cooler. Yeah. Uh, but they never they never dipped too far like past that line to where you're like that ruined the whole movie or anything or anything okay. close to that. It was just like okay, well, that ends up being a pretty nice homage at the end of mm-hmm. the movie to to the predecessors and stuff and you leave i think i left feeling pretty satisfied yeah yeah with the whole thing that movie had me we all laughed out loud a multiple lot. times oh, several yeah. times i was on the edge of my seat about the drama and the action that was happening in Shit. the movie okay uh and i wasn't overly disappointed and um i, I gave in the, a crap the, about the characters the end, yeah, yeah, the way the ending and everything wrapped up, like it felt, it felt sufficient. Also, but. there was a little bit of audience interaction that made us oh laugh my God, out oh my loud. God. Yeah, there yeah. was. Yeah, so I mean, it was the whole experience. It really was. was. There a ghost? No, no, we had a ghost in the audience. It gave <laughs> me a fucking blowjob. Yep. Mm. Uh, well, I mean, it was Josh in a sheet, but you know, a spectral uh, cosplaying a gussy. Stop, stop <laughs> Those consonants aren't right. You keep putting them together in a way that isn't okay. I'm going to sneak off while you guys discuss other stuff. No, we actually uh, we got to wrap it up. Oh, we gotta, fuck. We gotta leave. There's so much more to talk about. I yeah. know, dude, but we'll have to we'll have to save it for maybe we'll just talk about it after the podcast. Oh, well, that's that. I mean, but we could save it cuz like I mean, we got Halo to talk about. Oh man, like, we sure do. But if, uh, anything I've learned tonight, it's that we need to become minor alcoholics and have a Saturday after dark podcast where yeah. we all just get drunk and yell into the microphone I mean, <laughs> for 9 hours. Hey, we could do a special live. I could do it. I could do it. Yeah. Hopefully yeah. my yelling I turned away from the mic as much so it's not I, yeah, as no. <laughs> yeah. It was the eating chips and vaping. And the, no, and you the won't even know the stamping of the table. I was hitting the table a lot, but I You mean, made your point. Inebriation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, yeah, we got to say goodnight. Uh, guten Nacht and good good night. Gussie Nitchin. <laughs> no. <laughs> Close nation. Oh boy. Drunk on that fruit fly tequila. <laughs>